and we need as much power as we can get if we're gonna have any hope of editing 4K. So this is Apple's 12 inch MacBook. On paper, it is terribly underpowered with a 1.1 gigahertz Quorum processor and no discrete graphics. So if I told you it can not only edit, but also export 4K video faster and more efficiently than a PC with more power, you'd probably think I was crazy, but keep watching. Recently, Linus Tech Tips dropped a video posing the question, can you edit 4K video on an ultra portable laptop? My immediate thought was, yeah, of course you can, but the more I watched, the more I realized how much simpler of a process it was doing so with Final Cut Pro 10. They went with an ASUS ZenBook UX303U configured with an i7 2.5 GHz processor, 12 gigs of RAM, and dedicated NVIDIA GT940M graphics. Now, not only should this obliterate the 12-inch MacBook, it's actually a 13-inch laptop and falls closer in line with the 13-inch MacBook Pro, but to keep things interesting, we're going to stick with the underpowered MacBook. To begin with, Linus and company tried dropping footage straight from their cameras in the Premiere Pro, only to discover less than stellar results. CPU usage was pegged at 100% right away to the point where we were measuring performance in seconds per frame, not frames per second. So in order to even have a snowball's chance in hell with that, they had to take the original footage, transcode it on a desktop, bring it back to the laptop, and then turn the playback resolution down to a quarter of the original just to get a workable experience. But how did the MacBook fare? With a 12-inch MacBook, I was able to transfer 4K Sony FS7 footage directly onto the laptop and edit an entire 4K video without transcoding, scrubbing across clips, and the timeline was surprisingly smooth, and while playback was definitely a little choppy, it was workable. Now, if you've never used it, Final Cut Pro 10 will actually render your timeline in the background while you're doing other tasks. So with this clip here, for example, I applied a layer of color correction, and as it renders out, it's converting the timeline into ProRes, no desktop needed. After it's rendered, you can see how smooth playback is. It's crazy. Scrubbing is butter, and I can instantly switch between full screen playback and timeline playback without missing a beat. And keep in mind, this is all done within one machine. If I did follow a workflow similar to Linus, I could transcode all the footage on an iMac and then edit off an external SSD with a MacBook, but that almost seems unfair. Scrubbing and playback would be instantaneous with no background rendering needed, and all that is cool and well, but what about exporting? With the Linus setup, after all was said and done, his two minute 4K H.264 export took around 17 to 20 minutes. As far as the 12 inch MacBook goes, I decided to take it up a notch and not just export a two minute 4K video, but a near four minute one, three minutes and 54 seconds to be exact. So while the MacBook does its thing, let's take a moment to read a few of my favorite tweets to all those who thought I was nuts. See you at CES 2017 when it's all done exporting. Things you could do while you wait. Build a new PC, install Premiere, re-edit your video, export it, upload it to YouTube, and nap. John's resolution for 2020. Hopefully the video finishes exporting. After you chopped a video on that 12 inch MacBook, did you cook your turkey on it? So jumping back to the export, we are just about done. Six minutes and a second when it hit 100% and six minutes and 12 seconds when I stopped the clock. Now just to make this just a little more interesting, I went and did the exact same export but with background rendering off. So the entire timeline had not been rendered yet, so all the color correction and everything was done through the export similar to what you would find in Premiere, and even that with the video twice the length exported in just under 13 minutes. So even in the worst case scenario, Final Cut Pro 10 with a video twice the length was still faster than a PC with more power in Premiere Pro. And on top of that, to solidify things, if I took this project and cut it down to two minutes, that export took three minutes and 20 seconds. Now to make this even more interesting, Linus and team, I present to you a challenge. Myself versus your entire team, weapon of choice as far as computers go, so you could pick your crazy 36 core server. And let's go head to head with a challenge on creating a video from start to finish. Now, if you guys want to see that, make sure to smash that like button. This is Jonathan with TLD, and I will catch you guys later.